But I want to take a little bit of time kind of getting into the second part of the book, um, which is essentially uh, the, what we have to do. Um, and, and that's w w one of the, the parts actually called we have to shut it down. Um, and in the book, you, you, I mean, again, we're, we're, we're having a short conversation here, but it's like you, you in, the, in the book, I highly recommend it. It talks about, you know, countless activists who are putting their lives on the line, putting their bodies on the line, you know, literally trying to stop pipelines from being built, literally chaining themselves to fences, doing all types of things to really, you know, stop the 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 machine that 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 continues on the capitalist machine the 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 dirty energy machine right so let's talk a little bit about how we try to actually shut it down to save uh what's left of uh, uh, for to save each other essentially right sure well i think it's really important well uh important to note that we're you know um the book doesn't argue and i and i certainly uh, uh, and not suggesting that we can somehow just shut it all down, right? You know, instantly, <laughs> overnight. Um, that that you know that phrase in that chapter comes from um, uh, one of the activists who a guy named Ken Ward uh, here in Massachusetts, and along with his, um, his friend Jay O'Hara, a young Quaker uh, activist, um, who anchored their thirty-foot uh, lobster boat, mm -hmm. which they named, by the way, the Henry David T. <laughs> um, they anchored it in the path of uh, a 680-some-odd-foot coal freighter at the Brayton Point Power Station in Somerset, Mass. And they blockaded, you know, 40,000 tons of West Virginia coal coming into that power station. They kept it from being delivered for a day. And they risked federal prison in, in doing so. They ended up, that's a long story, but they ended up uh, not <laughs> having to go to jail. Uh, and a pretty, a pretty big, big court case uh, with yeah, those guys, and the, the ruling on it is is pretty, pretty amazing, and it, it is, is good. Amazing. And that's all told in the book. And yeah. I should also say that the story of their trial, they were able to use the necessity defense, um, and then the DA in Ball River, Sam Sutter, actually ended up dropping the charges, and then actually making, going out and making a statement to the media supporting them. Yeah, <laughs> saying that this was an act of civil disobedience, and 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 they, you know. Uh, they shouldn't be prosecuted, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, they went on with another activist named Tim De Christopher, and then one of their core supporters and one of my good friends and their good friends, uh, Marla Markham, here in Massachusetts, um, uh, to form a, a new center called the Climate Disobedience Center, climatedisobedience.org, in order to support, you know, encourage and support other activists who want to take that kind of really escalated uh, direct action, nonviolent direct action. So, um, so, so, but so, having said all that, I think so. Shut it down, right? Um, I think you know we have to, of course, acknowledge that the only way we're ever going to shut coal plants down, um, shut it, shut down, you know, the, you know, as we say, you know, uh, sort of end the fossil fuel industry as we know it, <laughs> is through um, political means, right? I mean. Uh, far more aggressive government action than, than is being seen now. And, you know, the theory of change here is that we're never going to see that kind of, of political action, of government action, um, until there's enough grassroots pressure, until there's actually enough political will, political pressure to do so. And so the role of radical activists, you know, when I say radical, I mean, in this case, I mean, you know, taking these kinds of, this, this kind of direct action. The role of that is just like in other movements in our history, whether it's the abolitionists, um, whether it's uh, 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 the civil rights movement or the women's rights movement, the labor movement, all sorts of movements for, for human rights and social justice. Um, the only time we've seen really deep Revolutionary change in this country is when ideas and you know, concepts, demands that have been considered impossible, truly radical and out of the mainstream, were basically forced into the mainstream conversation by, by these radical movements. Um, they forced the issue. Uh, and, and things that were, you know, uh, completely outside the realm of political po uh, possibility were really unthinkable not only became thinkable, but eventually became inevitable. Um, 
And so that that's why I'm highlighting the role of these these activists who have really taken dramatic dramatic action. Another big example in the book is the uh, the, the well known um, you know tar sands blockade in mm-hmm. Texas that really threw down um, in a in a big way to try to stop the construction of the southern leg of the Keystone XL pipeline, which you know of course got built uh, from Oklahoma to the Texas Gulf Coast. And, you know, they failed, and they, they knew they would probably fail to stop construction of that. But it, their very act of resistance, this of this dramatic campaign of, of nonviolent direct action, where people, in some cases, really risked their lives um, to try to stop that pipeline, it was so inspiring and galvanizing to the rest of the climate movement and the, and the, and the effort to stop the Keystone XL that, you know, uh, it, it really... Um, I think it's fair to say that it, it, it played a big role um, in uh, you know in building the climate movement that we that we see today. 